What's going on, Fragrance family? Welcome to another episode of Take It A Test Drive Thursdays. This series is where I wear a scent on my skin as my scent of the day for several days, including today from my own personal collection. And it's time for me to give you my thoughts before it goes into the vault for a full-fledged review. Today's test drive is on the famed house of Guerlain. And it's a flanker to the Abbey Rouge lineup. This one called Abbey Rouge Low. Long discontinued scent from, from the brand, uh, which gives you a fresher take on the original. So I'm happy to give my thoughts on the Abbey Rouge, at least part of the Abbey Rouge line. I haven't really spoken much about them. Um, I've spoken about Beau Cavalier, which is an EDP version of Abbey Rouge, and this one, that's pretty much it. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes, I do want to thank our sponsor of the day, FragranceX.com. I wanted to thank them for this fragrance, and you can get a bottle of Abbey Rouge and this one. It shows up from time to time on their site. So do check out FragranceX and support me by utilizing coupon code ROBES08 in the coupon section. It is my channel name, so it's not hard to, to forget it and you get 15% off on their website on any purchase at all. It doesn't have to be Abbey Rouge Low. Now let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this one. Release date was back in 2011. So it's been a while since it's been released. Uh, the nose, of course, the in-house special me, Teddy Wasa. Uh, major notes to my nose are orange, vanilla, and jasmine. So let's get to sniffing. Now I am wearing this scent of course today, but I want to remind myself of the introduction. So let's spray this arm here and let's sniff Abbey Rouge low. The opening, I have to say, the opening of Abbey Rouge low um, shows you on, on one side a classic style of perfumery and it, 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 it really gives you a modern take to that, if that makes sense. The lemon from Abbey Rouge Eau de Toilette opening kind of gets a facelift here with orange. Now the opening of Abbey Rouge Lo ex is exactly what I thought I was going to get with a fresher take and I saw some citruses up top. It's bright, very vivid as an orange note. Um, uh, it's well done by Wasser. It really shows a beautiful bitter orange note up top. And it's almost um, not disrupted at all. It, it just wants to give you the spotlight of that orange note. So you get that singular orange note for a bit. So your nose enjoys just the thinnest and the brightest of the note. Um, so it's really thin watery almost kind of like low um, but there's more to the backbone once that kind of burns off a little bit you start getting into this um, I like to say cream sickle section of the fragrance which orange is still your central theme for this part and the vanilla backs it up the vanilla is creamy and uh, for obvious reasons, for the creamsicle namesake, and does make me think of a, almost like a vanilla ice cream. Um, the vanilla in here is absolutely well done. It's, it's, it's beautiful, and, and those two notes together, just on a singular note, and it's not anything complicated, but it's very well done, very well, um, the transition from just the orange, just showing itself bright, um, and light and thin and then all of a sudden you start getting some vanillic tendencies to kind of give it that creamsicle vibe. Now that doesn't stay put for too long. Um, so anybody that's thinking creamsicle for the duration, that's not going to happen. That orange is going to burn off and then other notes come into play. There's a little hazelnut that comes into play a little later in this release. It's fairly mild up top. And Guerlain is known for the almond from the tonka bean, but they switched it up on us on this one with the hazelnut. I wasn't seeing that coming. Again, it's not dominant, but well balanced, works well with the overall theme. So I really like that little nutty aspect that they put into this one. Now you start getting more hints of patchouli and jasmine which will start amplifying into the heart and into the dry down. A solid, well-blended opening, to be quite honest. You get a little bit of everything in this opening, uh, but they do have their stages, which I really like seeing that um, 
that blend from Wasser. Now into the dry down, the orange continues to burn off and makes way for that vanilla to have a more prominent role as the jasmine now continues to amplify now to a strong, very strong secondary note into the heart. Once the jasmine and vanilla are your main pillars in this set, I feel like in, you know, in the middle of the heart there, now you're starting to see, okay, this is a jasmine vanillic backbone. And I, I sense at that point a little bit of some powdery aspects here, but again, not overly powdery, but fairly light, but it's there. The patchouli is there too. So is the hazelnut. So they're both still there from the opening, but those two are minor secondary notes uh, to back this thing up a little bit. At the end of all the wearings that I wore this uh, particular release for, eh, give or take a week, uh, I felt this was a grown up, you know, for an older gentleman, well blended fragrance, easy to wear. Um, that is just what I came out. I, I felt like the ingredients in here, well composed. Um, you can tell that, you know, it was well done, but very classical, simplistic, but well done. Now let's get into seasons, day, night, versatility, and performance seasons. Um, spring, the upcoming spring is going to be perfect for this one. Summer, you can wear this. Fall, so this is the most, again, I, I would say all seasons, but those are the best seasons for it. But I could see this as a, unfortunately discontinued, but could be a signature scent for someone in the office, inoffensive, easy to wear type of scent. Day or night, I feel like this is more of a daytime scent than a nighttime scent. I just, it just doesn't have that pop for a nighttime scent. Versatility, very versatile, as you can tell from my review. Um, super versatile scent. Performance, longevity, a little low. Again, um, you know, you're expecting something light with the word low in it. Um, I don't think I've ever met a version of a fragrance that says low in it and it's 10 plus hours and projection is like a beast. Longevity on this one, four to six hours uh, throughout these wearings and projection was average to below average. So performance isn't overly crazy here, but still fairly solid. I don't think it's a flop in regards to performance. So at the end of the day, my final thoughts on Abbey Rouge Low before it goes into the vault for a full review. You know, I feel like the season's best for spring and summer. I still haven't done that type of testing. I think I could get more out of this fragrance, but it's a fairly simple uh, release, but Low seems to be, to me, a modern take to Abbey Rouge around that time, back in 2011. They removed the leather note. It has a beautiful bright citrus, also backed obviously by vanilla and a hint of jasmine. The hazelnut instead of a tonka bean was a good addition by Wasser in this scent. And we would expect an almond from Gedelay and they kind of changed the script on us, which makes things a little more interesting in this release because uh, at least from my testing, I haven't seen much of that note from Gedelay. So um, that was interesting to see that in this particular release. Now it's versatility is a very strong point in this release. It's through the roof, very easy to wear. So it's a huge plus. And I remember again earlier in this review saying that this is for older gentlemen. I don't want to date it that way. I think a younger gentleman can wear it depending on your taste, um, which goes into that versatility as section of things. Overall, just an excellent release from Gedelay uh, from a storied brand and from a storied line. I feel like Lowe was a good one. I feel like Abbey Rouge has a lot of um, releases that were, how can I say, like especially around, you know, when I was in the fragrance community, 2008, 2009 and, and more, um, I feel dress code got some love, but other than that, I feel like some of these Abbey Rouge flankers didn't really get the love it deserved. I feel like this is a really solid release from the brand. Now I'm done with Abbey Rouge for now. It's time for you to hit us up in the comments below. What do you think of this particular fragrance? I'm sure if you clicked on this, you may have owned it, loved it, hated it. Love to see your takes in the comments below. Looking forward to those. And as always, Greater Pore Fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube.